Isaiah chapter 61, the Bible says in verse number 1, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise uh, for the spirit of heaviness, uh, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you for the good singing. Lord, we thank you for the good testimonies, how our hearts have been blessed. Lord, we know the devil's fought hard today, but God, you gave the increase through them testimonies, and we thank you for it, that folks bragged on the goodness and the wonderfulness and the awesomeness of Almighty God. Now, Father, help us, Lord, to center our thoughts and our hearts even more upon you through the Word of God. Lord, I pray you'd elevate us to be seated in heavenly places. I pray you'd touch hearts, and I pray we'd all leave out of here better than we came in. Save that one near us hell. Send Holy Ghost conviction to our hearts, and help the saved to be revived. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to draw your attention <coughs> excuse me, to a couple things. First thing I want you to notice is the prophet Isaiah is in these verses uh, prophesying what would happen in his day and what would happen in the days to come. And I'm glad that some of this is still yet to happen. The Lord is coming in vengeance. He is coming to right all wrongs. He's coming to put old Slewfoot in his place. Hallelujah for those days. But while we live right now, he gives us hope in these verses. Yes. Amen. What you notice, first of all, the touch of God in verse number 1. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. Notice uh, the anointing, the touch of God. What a blessing to have a touch of God. What a blessing for God's hand to be on your life. What a blessing for these wonderful testimonies that folks stood up uh, and talked how God interfered uh, in their world, uh, how God moved in their life. Uh, listen, uh, without His touch, we're not much. Uh, but oh, with His touch, uh, we've got good tidings to give unto the meek. Uh, we've got something to let the world know about. Uh, there is a God in glory, uh, but uh, He's also in me, uh, and He wants to be in you. Uh, and hey, you can know Him today. Uh, thank God for His touch. Uh, Thank God uh, uh, when you're going through it uh, and you can feel his hand show up and put it on your shoulder. Uh, let you know it's going to be all right. Uh, let you know he's heard your prayers uh, and he answers them as quick as you can uh, uh, throw them out there. Uh, what a blessing uh, I to know that God is for us uh, and God is real uh, and his hand is able to lift your spirit. Uh, thank God for the good touch of God. Uh, without it, we're not a mess. Listen, I've heard preachers preach without the touch of God, but I sure do enjoy those that preach with the touch of God. Uh, oh, I, I don't want to get up and preach without the touch of God. Uh, be a mess, we just uh, uh, have prayer and go to the house. Uh, but oh, what a blessing when His hand's on it. We see the touch of God. I want you to notice the task for God. Look what he says again in verse number 1. He says, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them uh, that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Uh, uh, notice uh, the task for God. Uh, he said, God has anointed me to preach uh, and to preach good tidings to the meek. Uh, uh, but here's what he's called me to do. This is the task uh, that he's given me. Uh, he sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Uh, if you're here today uh, and your heart's been ripped in two, I've got good news uh, 
He's got a balm of Gilead, and he's able to mend the broken heart. He's able to, uh, to bind up your wounds. He's able uh, to put healing in your wings uh, where you can soar again, uh, where you can see uh, the mountaintop again, uh, where you can fly over the valley you're in today. He said not only uh, to bind up the brokenhearted, but to proclaim liberty to the captives. If you're held by sin today, I've got news for you. The Lord can liberate you from your sin. He came seeking to save that which was lost. But maybe you're here today and you're saved and you're being held captive. Maybe you're being held captive by your past. Maybe you're being held captive by some pain. Maybe the devil's just got you all wound up today. I've got good news. The same one that saved you, he can still set you free. And he can break those chains. He can loose you and let you go. He can break the bondage in your life. Can I say the task also included not only binding up the broken heart and proclaiming liberty to the captives, but opening the prison to them that are bound. Hey, praise God that two ladies today in prison got set free. Oh, they're still behind bars, but they're not bound by sin. And there's a lot of folks outside this jailhouse, outside this prison we go to that are held bound, that are in a prison. They're in a prison held by their pain, held by their past, held by all kinds of things. There are folks in prison to drugs and other addictions. But I've got good news. Jesus is able to break their problems. Oh, he goes on to say, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I want to tell you something, Jesus is coming. Mm, but there's no more time acceptable than right now. No better time than for you to accept the Lord because his acceptable year is coming. Mm, we might not even make it to 2019. You better be ready to meet him. You better know that your name's written down in heaven. Uh, then his vengeance is going to be poured out, friend. You don't want to be on that side of the thing. You want to be on that glory side, not that wrath side, huh? And he said, and to comfort all them that mourn. I've got good news. He's the God of all comfort. And he knows how to help a grieving heart. So we see the touch of God. We see the task for God. And I want you to notice, and God doesn't touch without having a task in mind. Let me say it again. Some of you didn't get that. God doesn't touch you unless he has something for you to do. And if God does touch you, it's not because he's bored. It's because he's wanting to use you to help somebody. We see the touch. We see the task. But notice the triumph from God. Look at verse number 3. <clears throat> to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Why? To give unto them beauty for ashes. Those that are mourning in sackcloth and ashes, the Old Testament way of showing how, how your heart's been ripped out and how you need God to move on the scene. He said, take them old nasty ashes and those old nasty grave clothes off. He said, I've got beauty for you. Hmm? Uh, yeah. The oil of joy for mourning. Those that are mourning, he's got the oil of joy coming your way. huh? Uh, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Uh, those that are heavy hearted, those that uh, 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 don't know which way is up, uh, uh, he's got a garment of praise and I'll help you the next time you get down. Uh, if you'll just do what some of these folks did around here this morning, start praising him, uh, start uplifting him, uh, start telling him how wonderful he is. Uh, hey, your heaviness will leave you. Uh, you'll find that oil of joy and that beauty uh, for ashes. He says, why? That the, they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. We see the touch of God in these verses, the task f uh, for God and the triumph from God. God does things in our lives that he might be glorified. He said that he would touch them, give them a task, to point unto them that morning Zion to give them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Why? So he just wants to benefit them? No. That they might be called the trees of righteousness. With God's help, I want to preach for just a few minutes on trees of righteousness. Brother Clint said in his Sunday school class, 
he got to talking about some of his heroes. And the teens started opening up talking about some of their heroes. And he said, many of them sitting in this room this morning. Now think about that. You know what he is saying? He's saying, in this room there are some trees of righteousness that has impacted these young people's lives. Can I say, if God's ever put his hand on you, you ought to be a tree of righteousness for him today. Mm -hmm. God worked in your life, Brother Phil, not so you could come and holler and hoop and do, so you could be a tree of righteousness. Huh? The psalmist said he planted us by the waters. Huh? Mm, I like that old song they used to sing. I wish somebody would sing it around here now. I shall not be moved. Huh? Why? Like a tree planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Uh, we need some trees of righteousness in these days. Uh, some that folks can look to and say, hey, I see God on them. Uh, God's done a work in their life. Uh, there's something about them I need in my life. We need some trees uh, of righteousness. Well, let me say first of all, and trees of righteousness are grounded. Amen. Look what it says, verse number 3. He says that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Can I say that trees start in the ground? They're planted. A tree don't start out 30, 40, 50 feet tall. It starts out as a little seed in the ground. It starts out as a seed that has sprouted and it's been transplanted. But it all starts in the ground. Can I say something else about trees? They spread their roots underground. Can I say however tall a tree is that its roots spread out that far underground? Because it needs to support that big old tree that's on top of the ground. And when a tree falls, it's because what's ever underground has died uh, and it no longer can support the weight of what's above ground. Uh, uh, so can I say it is very important uh, if you're ever going to be a tree of righteousness, you've got to be grounded. Uh, 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 what happens in the ground is important. Uh, uh, can I say we used to have two trees in our front yard. I went and preached revival, come back, one was gone. Uh, uh, Miss Annette hated that pine tree in the front yard. I went to uh, to preach revival, come back, she had Brother Josh and the boys out there, cut that up. I, I pulled down the street. I said, what happened to our tree? Uh, I mean, it was a big pine tree. You put Christmas lights on a Christmas tree. Uh, when the kids were little, said, we got a Christmas tree in our front yard. Not no more. Gone. Can I say something about them two trees in the front yard? They pulled all the nitrate and all the uh, uh, things out of the soil, the nutrients out of the soil. It was real hard to get grass to grow uh, 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 when uh, uh, we would get to where there's a little drought in the summertime. When the rain would stop, uh, the first thing would die was the grass, but the trees never died. Uh, uh, they took all the nutrients. Uh, they need those nutrients uh, in order to stay strong. Uh, uh, can I say uh, where that uh, pine tree uh, went uh, for years? I've been trying to get good grass. Grass. It still don't go grass because them roots aren't dead down in there. I'm convinced. Uh, hey, we had a cherry tree get gone. It's not good to be a tree in my front yard, huh? Uh, she had Nick and Christian cut a cherry tree when I was away preaching. Either I should go away preaching or it's not meant for us to have trees in the front yard. But can I say that there's still things that sprout up out of the ground uh, wanting to be in future cherry trees. Uh, and that tree's been gone for three or four years now. Uh, uh, those nutrients, those roots, what's underground is so important because it sustains life. Uh, Amen. you got to be grounded. Can I say trees shoot forth from the ground? Mm. got to be grounded. You know what's the difference between somebody here that's saved and just a tree and somebody here that's saved and is a tree of righteousness? The tree of righteousness has been grounded. You see, God gave us the most rich soil you could ever be grounded on. The Word of God. This is where nutrients in life comes from.
And when you uh, ha have gotten in this book, and more importantly, this book has gotten in you, uh, hey, let the winds blow, let the storms come, uh, let problems come, uh, you'll still stand, tree of righteousness, because uh, you're built on the right foundation. You've been grounded in the things of God. Uh, uh, that's why when some people are hit with a wave of adversity, they just still stand. Uh, and others, when they're hit with adversity, they fall uh, because they've not been rooted, rooted and grounded in the world word of God Amen. trees of righteousness are grounded can I say this about trees of righteousness they grow toward the heavens Amen. you'll never see a crooked tree of righteousness you'll never see a tree of righteousness leaning one way or the other uh, they shoot toward the heavens I've never been out there and seen them uh, redwoods out in California but when I've seen pictures that they've carved out where you can drive through one of them that's a tree now uh, and uh, can I say uh, I've never seen one of them trees leaning to the right or to the left they go straight up uh, uh, can I say uh, every tree of righteousness uh, always points towards heaven uh, always straight as an arrow uh, their life is straight you can find no uh, uh, accusation or cause against them uh, and when you ask them why are you so straight uh, they'll just point toward heaven uh, say that's where I'm headed uh, that's why I want to be I don't want to get there around a windy crooked road uh, I'm just going straight uh, he's the way the truth and the life uh, I'm growing towards him uh, he's the one that planted me uh, and he's the one that's going to get glory from me uh, Mm, trees of righteousness are straight and they grow towards heaven I like folks whose lives point you to heaven I wouldn't give you a flip for somebody whose lives points to themselves I guarantee you it don't take much uh, uh, in this life to blow them over but a tree of righteousness uh, they grow toward heaven a tree of righteousness is grounded can I say something else about trees of righteousness they give off shade That's important because the sun gets real hot. And can I say stuff coming out of the ground can get burned up by a real hot sun. But when there's shade over that, they're able to grow. That might help some of you. Get it in a minute. Come here, Joseph. Come here, buddy. You look so sharp. Come here. Now, he's just started growing. If I'm a tree of righteousness, I might take some heat so he can keep growing. But if I'm not where I'm supposed to be and he's left out there by himself, won't take much to blow him over. Uh, I don't want to be a preacher where he says, well, the preacher, we used to be here, but he's not here no more. That might deter his growth. Yes, sir. That might cause some heat to come into his life to cause him never to look to Jesus. Hmm? It's important to take some heat. The trees of righteousness take heat because there's precious things coming up behind them. Amen. Thank you, Joseph. You look sharp. You did good. Huh? That's so important. Hey. Take heat. I learned this from Chief. I don't give you much credit, but I'm about ready to, okay? Uh, he spent most of his life out in the woods. You don't get possum at Kroger's. You've got to go out and get it. Uh, hey, did you see that video? You probably don't. You don't watch TV. I saw a video this week. A possum went up and stole a pair of shoes that a, a parcel had left, a UPS or FedEx guy had left on the doorstep, and they had a video camera, you know, watching their packages and stuff, and a possum snuck up there, drank some water out of a cat's bowl. That's why you shouldn't have cats. You get cats, you're going to get possums. <laughs> huh? Dogs run possums off, okay? He drank some water out of a cat's bowl and went over, grabbed that package and took off with it. I wonder if them shoes was its size. Huh? Possums are evil. But he anyway, he eats them. No, he really don't. But he'll put, he'll put hurt on a groundhog, though. All right? Yeah, I know. But he told me this. He said, Brother Doug, he told me this years ago. He said, Brother Doug, trees give off oxygen. We're losing a lot of trees. He said, if you come up on a tree, you can get so, so close to it, you can, you can start feeling that oxygen. And he said, don't matter how hot it is, 
you'll feel refreshed. And we had a big old tree right out here off the parking lot. That's before we had that big old parking lot out there. And sure enough, it was hot. I'd been out there mowing it. It was hot. I just got pretty close to that tree. I didn't even get up underneath it, Brother Mike. All of a sudden, I started feeling cooler. I thought, under God, trees, the chief's right. And then when he forecast that snowstorm in, in April, I have never doubted you ever again. Uh, you can just be around a tree of righteousness and feel refreshed. There are just some people of God, I, I just got to, if I can just get around them, my spirit's lifted. If I can get around them, uh, they'll help me. They'll encourage me. They'll be a blessing to me. Uh, that's what a tree of righteousness does. Uh, hey, they provide some shade. Uh, they provide some refreshing. Uh, they, re they provide some hope. Uh, what a blessing to have trees of righteousness, my dear friends. Uh, they not only give off shade, they not only grow toward heaven, but they generate fruit. Hmm. The Bible said in John 15, verse 16, You've not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Uh, uh, Ma Jesus said in Matthew 7, 20, Wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Amen. You know how I know a tree of righteousness? They have righteous fruit. Yes, sir. You know how I know a corrupt fruit? A corrupt tree, they have corrupt fruit. Hmm? What can I say? trees of righteousness they're just growing toward heaven they don't sit around and say look at me and all the fruit I'm producing they're just growing toward heaven but see when they're growing toward heaven because they've been grounded they can't help but generate fruit I promise you uh, uh, if you knew who those heroes were that those young people were looking to I promise you those people that are their heroes don't come in saying I want to be a hero today they're just being a tree of righteousness. They're just growing toward heaven, but they're impacting others and they're producing fruit. Hmm? Thought about this. Trees of righteousness, they're grounded. They grow toward heaven. They give off shade. They generate fruit. But they also glorify God. Isn't that what the Bible says? Look in verse number 3 of your text that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Here's why. That he might be glorified. Trees of righteousness never bring attention to themselves. Chief didn't stand up and say, I told the preacher about that, but I brought attention to him. Why? Because he made an impact in my life. And it brought God glory. Because we used him in a message today. Hmm? Can I say... And trees of righteousness can't help but glorify God. John 15, 8, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Amen. When a tree takes the heat, weaker ones get by. That glorifies God. When the tree produces fruit, the fruit glorifies God. When a tree grows toward heaven, he's pointing to God. Yeah. Trees of righteousness are righteous because their whole motivation is Jesus Christ and Him glorified. Amen. Trees of righteousness say, Not I, but Christ that liveth in me. My dear friends, unfortunately in our day and age, there's too many saplings. Remember Arbor Day? Arbor Day is a tree-hugging day. It's that green day. When I was a kid, we didn't have Arbor Day. We burnt Arbor in the fireplace. Huh? Miss Emily's talking about popcorn again in Sunday school. And I said, yeah, when I was a kid, we either jippy popped it or we did it in the fireplace. That's the only way we got popcorn. Uh, they have one of them real long popcorn pop. Wish I had that. Probably get a lot of money for that on eBay nowadays. Huh? Hmm? Uh, but listen, a lot of saplings. They, they got Arbor Day, and kids used to bring home a little sapling, you know, wrapped up in plastic. Said, we got to plant this in the ground. Not a one of them made it. <laughs> them saplings were probably about six years old, all dried out. Probably came from China somewhere or something. I don't know. 
It wasn't no North American oak, I promise you that. It didn't make it. Can I say we got a lot of saplings in churches today. They're never going to make a tree of righteousness because they're just not getting grounded. They're just saplings. And some are trying to get grounded. They're faithful. They come to the house of God, but they just never get any bigger. They're just satisfied being a sapling. What we need are some trees of righteousness. Well, I can think back in my life coming up as a kid, folks in church that loved God, had a touch of God in their life, I can think about preachers. I can think about Sunday school teachers. I can think about folks who just get up and sing. Folks who just be used of God. I can think about those folks, that, folks that I met coming up, and boy, what an impact they made in my life. I wonder in this generation who's going to who's going to grow up and be a tree of righteousness to impact this generation. I wonder, thirty years from now, what this church is going to look like if Jesus don't come back. Had a guy ask me yesterday. He said, you all still sing hymns and still sing the old southern gospel music at your church? I said, yeah. He said, I told my mama she needs to come here and visit. She likes that old stuff. Well, why don't you come too? Huh? You see, the old, old time way and old time religion is going off the scene. Holy Ghost power preaching is going off the scene. Old time worship's going off. See, you'd be hard pressed to go to church nowadays where on a Sunday morning preachers just stop and take testimonies. And if he did, you wouldn't hear much. Amen. Just trying to say, we better have some trees of righteousness. Well, what, what kind of church is this going to be in 30 years? Hmm? Let me say, we don't need saplings, we need trees. Let me lay this charge at you. Be a tree. Just be a tree. Just be a tree. Just be a tree. Be a tree of righteousness. And in so doing, Jesus will be glorified. And friend, when you're off the scene, Revelation 14, 13, and their works do follow them. Be a tree of righteousness. Just be a tree. Hey, if you sing, sing as a tree to glorify God. If you teach, teach, be a tree, glorify God. Uh, you preach, preach, be a tree, glorify God. You go over to jail, go over to jail, be a tree, glorify God. Huh? You out and invite folks uh, out of church, just be a tree, glorify God. Huh? On your job, just be a tree of righteousness, glorify God. Everywhere you go, just be a tree. We see too many saplings, just be a tree. Let me ask you, are you a tree of righteousness? If not, you can be. Just be a tree. Let's all stand, Brother Ray. Get a song of invitation. <clears throat> While he gets a song, let's pray. Father, we sure do bless your holy name. Isaiah 61. God, how we need your touch. God, when you touch, lay forth the task. Lord, help us to see a triumph by us just being trees of righteousness and you getting glory for impacting people's lives. God, I'm thankful I can look around here and see so much growth in a lot of people. Help folks just be a tree. Help folks not to desire or be satisfied being a sapling. Help them to desire to be a tree. When others see them, they see the work of God in them and are just amazed at what God can do. So God, help us this day. Lord, the purpose in our heart to get grounded, to grow straight, and to be everything that Jesus would have us to be, that Jesus might be glorified. Lord, thank you for those in here that are trees. Lord, I pray you just keep helping them, keep growing them, keep strengthening them. And God, we'll thank you for what you do. God, if there's somebody here not saved, I pray they come today and get saved. God, maybe somebody's uh, facing some heat. I pray they'd get up underneath a tree that's been up underneath you. And God, they'll get some relief. God, do something supernatural in this invitation. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.